Hi, I'm Dimitri from Orca, and in this episode we are going to talk about the longevity system overall philosophy. The first flight tests of LAS-25DA associated with Mission 9 are going to happen next month, so we thought it would be a good idea to talk a little bit about the philosophy behind this rocket vehicle. In this episode, we are going to see how we came up with the idea of a vehicle designed as a first stage or booster for orbital rocket launches using water-based electric propulsion. In episode 37, we are going to see how using this technology is going to reduce the cost of orbital launches while protecting the environment. The companies involved in the space business are making efforts to reduce the launch costs and their efforts are mainly directed to improve technologies that are decades old. They push the envelope to gain a few more seconds of specific impulse by increasing the chamber pressure or by using slightly better propellants like methane instead of kerosene or by densifying the propellants by means of uh, cooling them. Arca made similar efforts by creating a single stage to orbit uh, rocket design supported by a linear aerospike rocket engine. The reusability, another trend in today's rocket development, did not deliver the trumped cost reduction of orbital launches yet, and the prices remain high. Why is this? Because after each flight, the vehicles need extensive checking and refurbishing, leading to a long turnaround time. It was clear that small steps towards innovation were not the answer to spaceflight cost reduction and the needed answer will come from a radically different approach. Therefore, we started to ask ourselves four fundamental questions. And the first question was, why are rocket launches expensive? The rocket launches are expensive because the vehicles, the fabrication and the launch operations are very complex and complexity leads to high cost. And the second question we asked ourselves was why are rocket systems complex? Because of their propellants. Their propellants are, depending from case to case, uh, volatile, explosive, toxic, cryogenic, carcinogenic, corrosive, and all of these are requiring uh, very specialized fabrication techniques and uh, very complex operations that are requiring severe safety measures. All of these are increasing obviously the costs. And the third question we asked ourselves was how can we reduce the complexity of rocket systems? Since we identified the propellants as the main cause of current uh, rocket's complexity, it was pretty clear for us that um, incremental improvements of current systems are not going to provide the solution to create a very cost-effective rocket system. Therefore, it was pretty clear for us that um, a radical approach was needed to eliminate the polluting, toxic, cryogenic, carcinogenic, uh, volatile, explosive propellants, or at least trying to reduce the use of them as much as possible. And the fourth question that we asked ourselves was, what is the potential propellant that has completely different properties compared with the ones that are currently used in uh, the rocket systems? And as much as it seemed an unreasonable approach, our answer was water, because it's the cheapest, the easiest available propellant and the safest uh, propellant, potential propellant to work with. And uh, we concluded after thousands of hours that the only way, current way, is to use an uh, electric system and to generate uh, water vapors in a convergent, divergent uh, nozzle like in any other rocket and uh, create trust by evaporating the water in the engine. And once again, I want to be very clear that the current rocket propellants in themselves, because they are quite cheap, are not the root cause of rocket launches uh, high cost, but the, because of their properties, the associated cost the, to fabric, for fabrication, launch operations, 
transport, uh, safety measures, all of these are leading to the extremely high cost of rocket launches. And obviously, water avoids all of these complex uh, fabrication technologies, complex operations and uh, very demanding safety measures. The idea of a hot water engine is not new. Robert Truox, who actually experimented with hot water engines, proposed it also in the 70s. Another effort was done by the University of Berlin, which also experimented with hot water rockets and their results were published through the European Space Agency. As far as we know, the university was the first one to propose the hot water rocket as a booster for orbital vehicles. On top of everything, water as propellant does not lead only to an unprecedentedly cost-effective vehicle to build and launch, but it came with two other great features, no pollution and unprecedented safety. Extensive tests were done at ARCA since July 2018 to develop a water-based electric rocket engine, and here is how the system works. The rocket tank is filled with regular water mixed with benign phase destabilizers used in the food industry. The water from the tank is electrically heated to temperatures in the range of 200 degrees Celsius in a process that lasts a few hours. Then the water is injected into the engine where a phase change occurs from liquid to vapors. In the engine, in the case of usable launch assist system, a further heating occurs. A second electric heating phase takes place using high discharge type of batteries, the same type of batteries used by ARCA to power the cutting edge ARCA board. For the upcoming Mission 9 flights, however, we are not going to use the extra heating provided by the LiPo batteries. But for our team, a new question arose. How can we practically use a rocket that has only 50 to 60 seconds of specific impulse when current rockets are having specific impulses that are around four times higher than this? and uh, we had a very hard time finding a solution to work with this uh, technology, to this rocket, because it was pretty obvious that this rocket can't work as an orbital launcher and not even as a suborbital launcher in one stage. And uh, we were afraid we are on a dead end, but the use of water as propellant um, that is offering a very low cost and also is protecting the environment uh, kept us pushing this and trying to find a solution to work with this uh, technology. But then we looked at the Space Shuttle and Ariane 5's SRBs that are indeed low performance rockets by themselves compared with the vehicle's main engines from the core stages. Their impulse is lower than the main engines and the propellant mass to empty mass ratio is very low, but the thrust to weight ratio is very high, as we can see from this table. It was clear that what matters for boosters is the thrust to weight ratio, while the specific impulse is of secondary importance. As long as the thrust to weight ratio is higher than the first stages, the booster will fulfill its duty to contribute to the vehicle's acceleration during ascent, regardless of the booster's specific impulse. Also, the higher the acceleration at start, the better the flight performance of the orbital vehicle. And with this conclusion well structured, the team started to perform simulations to observe the impact of a low impulse water-based electric propulsion vehicle used as a first stage slash booster for an orbital launcher. And we named this vehicle the Launch Assist System because obviously this vehicle is going to be used only as a first stage for a conventional upper stage vehicle. But we are going to talk in the next episode about uh, concrete simulations and vehicle configurations and why we do think that uh, the water-based electric propulsion is going to be a very strong alternative to the polluting uh, rocket systems available today and uh, why we really think that this is a stepping stone towards the creation of a next generation vehicles that are very cost effective and benign for the environment. Until then, stay safe in this uh, hard time and protect yourself because of this uh, virus that uh, affects the whole world. 
See you next time on Flight of the Aerospike. Don't forget to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and support this video series on uh, Patreon. See you next time on Flight of the Aerospike.